Hello, everybody. Uh, it's Alex here at the uh, Hobbyplex offsite uh, man cave, whatever you want to call it. And um, uh, I'm building my son's B6 tonight. I got it uh, started on uh, Tuesday night, and then yesterday I got home and I really didn't feel like working on it. So, um, so here I am. And uh, uh, I want to warn everybody, there might be a uh, slight possibility that my wife and my son might be heard arguing on this live stream. So uh, for your entertainment, I present to you the Sturgeon family household. Uh, my son decided to go out and uh, not return home when he was um, told to. And now they've been arguing about whether or not he needs to give up his phone. And uh, so... There is a slight possibility that in the background, uh, you might actually hear them uh, argue. I'm staying out of it. Uh, I'll let them deal with it this time. And uh, hopefully that's all it takes. So I'm focused. I want to get this built. So the uh, Hobby Flex will return to racing um, next weekend. So... Uh, now that we have a date and we know when we're going to run, um, it's time to get going. It's time to get stuff started. So, um, I am, uh, I am definitely here, um, getting things ready. Ooh, that's really cool. So I have up on the YouTube, um, on my TV here, I'm, there's a, huh, there's a, uh, uh, a rock crawling place that I've never seen before. And they have this really cool bridge. That is neat. Anyways. All right. So Cole's here. Serena's back on here. So, uh, so racing will be back. Um, we're going to do it slow. Uh, Saturday, um, May 16th which would have been our first summer series race uh, is now going to be our first club race back. Um, you're only going to be allowed to sign up online. Um, so we can kind of control it. We're going to only going to allow 30 people. So if everybody brings two cars, that's about a 60 entry club race. And uh, for the month of May, that's what we got. So it'll be uh, May 16th, May 23rd and May 30th. And then hopefully in June, We'll just go back to what we normally do, which is a Tuesday night um, scale night with crawling um, and open practice. And then uh, Friday, family Friday off road every Friday. And then we'll see um, if Saturdays will maintain uh, their turnout. Um, so, uh, but that's kind of what we got uh, going on. So family Friday won't start up until June, um, the first Friday in June. No second Friday in June, because first Friday in June is a summer series race. Um, we talked about it and stuff and, uh, you know, part of the deal, uh, with being the kind of place that we are, where we attract large groups of people and stuff. What we don't want to do is, um, have anything get out of hand or seem like it is. Um, you know, I'm personally not, not afraid of, of being around people. Um, and I think the people that would come out obviously aren't, uh, but what we don't want is for there to be, um, a large gathering of people and have some, uh, uh, douche canoe come in and, uh, um, you know, call the cops or something, something stupid like that. So we're being very careful and cautious. And, uh, um, once, uh, once we get through the month of May, I think, I think, I think it shouldn't be a problem to go back to what we always do, um, which is have, uh, have racing when we normally do it. So I'm looking forward to that, but for this Saturday, not this Saturday, but for the 16th, um, registration will open up on RC sign up Sunday at 5 PM. And, uh, if it fills up, it fills up. If it doesn't, um, you know, uh, we might be able to take an entry or two at the track. Uh, but, for now, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to sign up online and it'll be filled up. So I'm more, um, 
I'm honestly more focused on the, uh, the track build. So we're going to run two weeks on uh, what we have now, the 16th and the 23rd. And then that Sunday night on the 24th, I'm going to stay after work, um, get in Bobcat or Bobcat, get in our, uh, our, our, our tractor and just go to town and uh, try to move as much as I can um, that night. And then we got all day Monday, all day Tuesday. And then all day Wednesday to get everything packed down and uh, piped and ready for that Saturday. And then uh, we'll definitely be on a more frequent um, watering regiment when that happens as well. So, um, and we'll probably not allow as many garage doors to be opened up um, during the week either um, so that uh, the track can stay more consistent. So yeah, there's all that. It's, uh, it's been a stressful, somewhat stressful two months. Um, just trying to figure out when the right time to, to go back to racing was going to be. And, uh, <clears throat> I think we're in a, I think we're in a decent, <clears throat> excuse me. I think we're in a, uh, a decent spot with that. So, so yeah. All right. Let's get all this, uh, kind of rearranged here. But uh, first summer series race is June 6th, and I'm excited about that. I miss our summer series. All of us fast people and not so fast people getting together and and uh, having big turnouts and fun days and watching everybody race and and uh, seeing how it turns out for the year and the month and the week. I have a really cool layout planned. Um, I can show you guys that. Did I show you guys that already? Who's on here? Did I show the uh, track layout last week? Because I honestly don't remember. Where's the diff gear at? kind of weird um <clears throat> anyways okay so this is what i got when i uh when i drew this out i actually had us going um counterclockwise and then I started thinking about it and uh, I started thinking about this specific layout actually going clockwise and I liked it a lot better. So um, so back straight away going this way now, going clockwise and you're gonna rise up and then you're gonna rise up again and I'm gonna make these uh, not whoops, but just basic uh, doubles, really low doubles. And then right here, you'll come down and then come right here. And I'm going to think I'm going to put a staircase right there. And then you'll hit this corner and this will be some sort of rhythm. Either it's going to be like a triple double or uh, maybe like a, maybe like a roll double double. Um, maybe a triple jump up to uh, an up and down section here. I don't know. We'll figure it out when I get there. A lot of times what, uh, what I put on paper isn't exactly what ends up being on there as far as what's in my mind. Sometimes I have a little bit more room. Sometimes I have less. A nice little switch back here. No, this will be nothing. This will be flat so we can uh, race each other. And then right here what I'm thinking about is some sort of, probably some sort of like mini step up or something. Where when you land, you got to get on the gas, and I'm going to put a big jump right up front here. But it, instead of uh, a lot of times on our track, because we're so high up in the air and you're looking down, a lot of times your car can almost not necessarily get lost, but more like um, it's just hard to judge because it is kind of close. So, I, but I think with it going away, I think it'll work out really well. So, um, 
After you land, you're going to rise up a little bit. I'm going to square this off in this corner. And then right here is a lot. There's a lot of dirt right here right now. All that dirt's going to be gone. It's going to be actually moved over here. Um, so you'll drop down and cut back. And then there's going to be a probably a, a double uh, right here uh, before you make the corner to go in the straightaway. So um, originally I had this going this way, but I kind of felt like, especially this part right here, we've actually had it that way for um, quite a while. And uh, I thought that I would, uh, if we went clockwise instead, and I made this kind of an uphill jump section, that'd be something that we've never done before in that section. We might've done it before somewhere else, but uh, not specifically right there. So that's going to take me four days. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, this upcoming Saturday, I am going to um, uh, take down the back wall on the dirt track at the Plex. And I'm going to pull out all that stuff that's back there and uh, try to clean it up, try to keep what's good, try to throw away what's bad, fill all that in with dirt. And then we're going to um, basically build a new wall except this time it's going to have proper posts. So it's uh, a, it looks better, but so it doesn't get rotted out as easy. And uh, so it can be supported better from the back. So there's a lot of work ahead and I'm going to try to parse it out over the next couple of weeks. But just knowing that we're going to be racing now is something that uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about. So it's basically, it's about time pretty much. Right. So I miss racing. I miss, you know, something. I miss that looking forward to it all, all week. So. <clears throat> Where's my stuff at? Yeah, Cole just said that he's excited to start on Tuesdays again, too. I, I do. I do miss that a lot. And, uh, um, I'm also going to try to mix in some improvements out there. Um, last night I actually stayed after we closed, I stayed and I, uh, uh, rebuilt one of the bridges that was broken, um, over the winter time and, uh, got that all fixed up. It was in dire need of some repair. So, um, once I get all that stuff done, there's, there's, uh, Quite a bit of stuff that I want to do out there. And once I get that kind of done, I'll definitely be doing a couple of videos on it. Oh, 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 uh, real quick. Um, we're going to try to do a uh, track build video for this upcoming track build that's quite a bit different than what we've done in the past. I've kind of done, you know, I've taken snippets of it every night and just kind of shown what we're doing. But I actually am going to take the time to go over like, um, you know, how to do how to, how to properly build an RC jump, you know, or something like that. Uh, um, you know, how to, uh, how to build an RC track. Um, and I'm going to try to, I might even do a couple time lapses. We got our GoPro here now, so, um, we might include some time lapse stuff, which would be really neat to look at. And, uh, um, I'm going to try to keep it within my means of editing. I'm not exactly the biggest pro on that, but, uh, it's definitely something that I've, uh, I thought it'd be cool to do uh, this time around. Normally it would have been done by now because we would have had our spring champs last weekend. Um, but because of this COVID stuff, you know, we really haven't had, uh, haven't had the chance. So yeah, I feel really bad for a lot of hobby stores. Um, um, I know quite a few uh, track owners and uh Oh, there it is. And, um, you know, um, if you just happen to be in the wrong state, it just sucks. You know, it's just not, uh, not a good time for that. Luckily, you know, here in Nebraska, we've been pretty blessed with, uh, not too many, not too many cases of this virus. And we haven't really had to deal with any shutdown orders or anything like that. Um, some common sense, common sense. And, uh, um, you know, for the most part, some uh, responsible people in our communities have uh, have made it so we can stay open. So, 
but yeah, I, there's, there's a lot of shops that are going to be hurting for a while and uh, they need to get open as soon as possible. And they know it too. And that's the worst thing. They know it. So they're trying their, a lot of these places are trying their best. They're trying to do curbside where they can. They're trying to, you know, do internet sales. Um, you know, some of them have been forced to kind of, um, you know, not necessarily sell stuff legally. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. So. Then what's cool is I, I haven't done it yet, but there's a, um, there's a gentleman from uh, that runs the track in South Africa and he asked me to draw something up for him and, and I haven't forgotten about it. It's just, we've been so damn busy with work. It's basically work, come home, sleep, you know, try to, try to fill in some, some me time so I can get some of the stuff done. And it's just been, it's just been busy, just so busy. Okay, so uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys, um, I hope a lot of you guys have been watching some of the other streams out there. I think uh, I think Spencer Rivkin just did a ball diff video. To be honest with you, I haven't seen it. But uh, here's your opportunity to see how I've always done a ball diff. We get everything situated here. Oh, they put it in cups now. They don't give you the little, the little squeeze bottles. Hang on. <clears throat> Luckily, I still have, I still have my, uh, my stealth diff lube from previous builds. So this is okay. This is the first, this is, uh, um, let's see, when did I build a, I built Emerson's car is six one back in the fall and we still had, we still had these things. This is, this is the first time I've seen this. It's cool because I like these little containers. It's not cool because how in the heck are you supposed to get this grease out of here without contaminating it with your fingers and stuff like that or whatever, or tools. So I don't know. This kind of puts me off a little bit. That's my honest opinion. This, this kind of, this is kind of lame. This is the right way. This I don't think is the right way. Go back to this. If anybody's watching, from you know who, so <laughs> good, not so good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You could. It'd be an interesting container. Little. What do you? It's not even a bag. You can't even call it a crack bag. It's something else totally, completely. That's so funny. All right. We don't want to lose any balls, so. We don't want to lose my balls. <coughs> do, 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 do. Now, here's the thing. Normally, uh, I'd want to spray these off with motor spray. However, um, I don't have any, so. You know, whatever. And I guess, I guess the way that I've always done diffs is I probably, I probably would just spooge this onto my hand because that's what I'm about to do. So I guess, I guess contaminate isn't the best word, but you know what I mean? Like it's just cleaner and easier to have this little guy and to go like this. And get it all out of there and then I'm gonna take my balls and put them in there 
And then I'm going to mix them up like this. So, yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter, does it? I just don't like the container. Put it that way. Sorry. I just don't like the container. And then you like that. And then go like that. And now you poke them into the little spots. Now that they're coated with grease. So the reason I put them in the palm of my hand is to, to mix them up and get them nice and coated all the way around. There's an article way back in like a, in like an issue of um, car action that uh, had Todd Hodge actually showing how to do diffs and it kind of kind of did it that way and I've always kind of stuck with it after that so and There's that. And now you take your, and again, if I had motor spray, which I don't, because I'm not prepared, uh, I'd spray this with motor spray real fast, but I'm not, so I won't. It'll be all right. It's my kid's car. You should just be happy I'm building it for him. So put a little bit on there, put that on there, kind of spin it around. Somebody just texted me. It's probably somebody from, uh, oh, no, it's got good. There we go. Uh, now we need our, what was that? Oh, now we need this. Put him there. And then the side that I just coated goes like that. Now I can take my grease again and spooge it all over this side. See, look at, you need this to do this. That wouldn't do that. Unless you had like a syringe, I guess, but that's just like more work. Okay. And now, once again, you just put a little bit on there like so. And again, if I had motor spray, I would have sprayed these off, but I don't, so not too worried about it. But if you do, probably should and then you can see the bearing and the chasm for the bearing and voila that part's done we'll set that there on something solid what do we got I wish I lived in town so I could race around your owner track well I wish you lived here too <laughs> our owner tracks pretty fun actually started racing on road uh, yesterday they had a um, we called it a soft opening. Uh, we had, we rounded up 10 onward guys plus, uh, plus whoever worked at the Plex and we actually had a race night. So if you get on, um, uh, livrc.com and look at the race results, you'll see that we actually did have a good race night last night. I think there was, I think there was 30 entries, something like that. So a lot of guys getting ready to go, getting, uh, um, getting tired of being around, not racing. So, um, the track, the honor track got some use. Uh, for someone just now getting into racing, what's better to start off with, eight scale or ten scale? Um, I would I would definitely say uh, one tenth scale, and the reason I say one tenth scale is uh, they're a little bit easier to uh, handle, and they're a little bit easier to work on. Um, 
there, eight scales have a lot of just raw power um, that in the hands of someone new can be frustrating. Um, if you're able to turn down the throttle on an eight scale quite a bit, um, a lot of times it can be very rewarding to start out with an eight scale. Uh, but you tend to learn some bad habits right off the bat with eight scale too, because you don't have to be, um, you don't, it doesn't require as much finesse, I think. So I would always, uh, I would always divert new people into one tenth scale, um, either a two wheel drive buggy. Uh, if you want to race, uh, something like a two wheel drive buggy, um, or, uh, or even a, just something like a Traxxas slash, um, that way too, you can kind of learn how to work on it. And it's not, you know, it's not as uh, um, difficult to understand, you know, like three diff setups or anything like that. Um, yeah, that's what I think. I think 10 scale is probably better for a beginner to start on. I love my cat. Uh, that's my cat, Roxy. She is named after my mama, who uh, passed away in 2009. And uh, Roxy is a... Uh, Perfect name for that cat because she does everything her way. You can't have anything done your way. It's all got to be her way. And uh, she never listens. Oh. <laughs> all right, so the thrust bearing now is next. we got to make sure that we don't lose any of the little bearings because I'm really good at that. And then also, here's your uh, your diff spring. Take a pair of pliers. Go like that. Squeeze that diff spring together. And Kind of forgot which end was really good. Okay. Put that in there. And uh, actually, Roxy just turned uh, one year old this month. Well, last month, April. She's now officially a one year old. Her and my, uh, <clears throat> my big cat, Finny who uh, continues to uh, to not be around um, when I want him to be around is uh, actually her and her and him get along pretty well so it's pretty nice I was really worried that they wouldn't be getting along very well I'm gonna change my change my view here. I want to watch something cool like uh, ooh, that looks cool 20 minutes so when I'm doing this show I usually uh, turn on like some sort of downhill mountain bike thing or some sort of RC car race or something like that so um, except that's not it weird or I'll turn on um, uh, some race I want to watch again and uh, last week I had on uh, um, a French race. I can't remember the name of the race, but it was France something. It was cool. Big, big, big outdoor track. Kind of miss it. Running on outdoor track sometimes. Until you got to do maintenance. Then it's not so, uh, then it's not so fun. There we go. Okay. Back to what I was doing. Uh, okay, so diff, black grease now, and fully coat this guy. And then uh, what I like to do is uh, spooge out a little black grease, and now you can pick up the little balls like so.
And you definitely want to make sure you got a clean surface to work on because what you don't want to get is like, uh, for instance, cat hair uh, all over your differential parts because it'll cause it to kind of bind up. And uh, you definitely don't want that. Any dirt, you definitely don't want little pieces of dirt anywhere. Um, you just want the balls, the grease, and the rings so they can do their job. And now that we have our thrust bearing. So a lot of times when you fill a ball diff, you go bad, it's actually usually the thrust bearing part of it that uh, that is no bueno. And just so you guys know, there is no amount, there is no wrong amount of grease um, as long as it's a lot of grease on your diff balls and your uh, thrust bearing. So don't uh, don't be uh, don't be a tight wad with your diff grease. Just put it in there. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, well, two things. Uh, so is a B seventy four good to start with? Been driving around the track of my house for years on an eight scale. Uh, yeah, B seventy four is an awesome car. Um, uh, they handle really good, and um, I would suggest starting out with a 13.5 motor. If uh, if your local track has a 13.5 four-wheel drive class, which most places do now, um, it's uh, it's basically a stock four-wheel drive with a 13.5 motor. Um, you know, they got to be a little bit faster uh, than your 17.5 because otherwise it gets you hot. So, um, that'd be an awesome car to start with. Really, honestly, any of the, any of the big uh, four-wheel drives now, the B74, the uh, the 22X4, um, the uh, the Techno especially, um, a lot of new people really like the Techno car because it's it's really tough and it's, it's a smidgen cheaper than... Uh, than like a B74, um, but also, um, you know, if you can afford it, the X-Ray is pretty good. Um, but any of those four main cars that are out there for four-wheel drive, um, you really can't go wrong with. Um, they're all pretty tough, and they all uh, um, handle really well now, too. So, yeah. Um, how's that work? You're building your son's car for the first time. He's not around. Well, he's in trouble uh, because he didn't. Uh, do what he was told today uh, and I asked him to come down here and work on his car I was actually gonna have him build the diff for us and uh, but he wouldn't give up his phone that was the uh, that was gonna be the deal he had to give up his phone uh, to be on the live stream tonight and he chose to uh, not uh, give up his phone so um, so we took it anyways <laughs> and also he's not on the live stream so <laughs> uh what's good 13.5 motor we have at the plex uh the motive uh gen 3 uh, i believe we've got the reedies uh we've got the trinities certifieds um what else do we have uh we might have an orca or two left although most of the off-road guys don't like orca for some reason um sounds about right so Motives are really popular right now. Uh, the Trinities, uh, yeah, all those. Reedies. Anyways, all right. So, uh, so here's my diff, and now what I'm going to do is it's very critical to not over tighten the differential um, because you don't want to crush the balls. Okay, the balls on the rings are very important. You don't want them to flat spot and you don't want to crush them. That's what breaking in the diff is all about. So when you're just building the car and you're putting it in for the first time, you definitely don't want to over tighten it. So uh, what I usually do is just hang on to it and carefully twist until you feel uh, a decent amount of resistance, so about, about right there. Anything tighter than that, and you can, you can crush those balls a little bit and uh, ruin your rings and, uh, or flat spot your balls. So, um, uh, flat spotted balls uh, are never any good and uh, and ruined rings are also not very good 
And those two can also be mutually exclusive. So there we go. I would, I would love to do more flying videos if I could get some time to fly. Uh, I wanted to go this week and I wasn't able to on Monday because I had a manager's meeting all day. And uh, <clears throat> that night I had the podcast to do. So I couldn't, uh, what am I doing? Um, so I will have more flying videos. Uh, just, uh, just as soon as I get some time and, uh, everything works out the right way. So yeah, kind of lame. Uh, this Monday is supposed to be like cold and rainy again and that's Mondays are my day off. So it's not looking too good. Yeah. I'd love to fly. That's, uh, uh, that's Jack on there. He, uh, used to work for us. You guys can go to his, uh, uh, backcountry sled, sled edits, I think, and uh, subscribe to his subscribe to his YouTube account. I'm sure he'll love that. He's the one who told me that I had to uh, um, make sure to remind people to uh, to subscribe and like and stuff. <laughs> All right, so there you go. So the diff is done. So that's good, and uh, that's this page. I'm going to take a drink of this nasty sugar water. Whoa, this rock crawling course is crazy. So I'm watching a rock crawling course on uh, on YouTube while I'm doing this, and uh, it is nuts. Like there's some stuff on here that I I haven't even attempted to make yet. I'm going to have to like this video so I can come back to it sometime. Hmm. That is crazy. I'd get yelled at if I made that. Like, like the, there's this rope, and the rope's like too bouncy, so it'd be really hard to get across. Some of the local guys would be kind of mad at me if I did that. Abitown, he only builds it for himself, which is true. I do only build it for myself. Okay, let's put this gearbox together. Get the lay down. And we need the bearings. Oh, actually, no, we don't. We need the uh, we need this right here. Uh, we need to this. Oh, that's really cool. It's like a, I wish I could turn the camera and show you guys. That's really neat. Whoa. Anyways. And let's see. We need this. Did you see what I left Will on your workbench? I haven't been on my workbench. I haven't been on my, I haven't been around my workbench at work uh, that often at all. So no, I did not. I'm sorry. Was I supposed to? Because if somebody told me I was and I forgot, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I kind of suck at that. I don't know if you guys can tell that or not. One, two. One, two. There you go. And, uh, don't need that. Kit setup is number two. And yes, uh, Bill's on here. I am building a B6.2 uh, D for my kid. It's uh, um, 
we actually just got them back in stock. They were out of stock for a little while. And uh, um, I was going to take his old car and just uh, B61 and uh, just get it ready for dirt and not worry about it. And then I saw that one of these showed up and I'm like, crap, uh, I'll get it. And then I'll just sell that one. And then I don't have to change anything on that one. I'll just sell it as a carpet car. So that's what I'm doing. So double bonus for me, less work. Just a decal. Okay. I will. I'm sure it's still there. Carpet Nats, something like 2008. Yeah, we had the uh, yeah we had Carpet Nats in 08 and 14. So I probably met you at the 08 ones then. That was a while ago. I'm uh, not missing that carpet at all. Our black carpet that we have now is uh, that was kind of gay. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> that was a. Uh, uh, Gold carpet, Ugh. terrible. New black carpet, awesome. Kind of mad at myself I didn't try to race in 2008. Oh, well thanks, appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for saying that. Um, that's, uh, you know, we try to keep everything full, right? And uh, a lot of times when um, we're reviewing some video and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's gratifying to see people when they walk in, they're like, oh, my God. Because that's kind of what we're trying to attempt to get. It's like what we're going for. I drove, um, whose car did I drive that one time? Uh, Mario Fico's WDT car. He let me drive it at the 2013 Nats when I was uh, there doing something. I was scorekeeping for Roar at that one. And uh, really wanted a car after that because his was locked in. Okay. So there's that, and then we got to put number two. So the kit setup is number two, and I don't know if this is going to be hard to see, probably, but <clears throat> there's a two and a one. I uh, made the mistake of putting these in wrong before and uh, not knowing it until uh, it was way too late. So we uh, definitely got to put in the, wrong, the right ones. And then you also got to make sure that you're putting in the screw on the right side, which is, uh, let's see. Uh, no, it goes like this. It's going to be. Yeah. This way. So the, the screw is on your left if you're sitting in the car facing forward. So. And. Uh, Number two. Number two. We should probably put the gearbox together like the instruction manual says, though, don't you think? So this is all together. And uh, that's together. Maybe. There it goes. Yeah, I kind of got out of, out of on-road racing altogether for a little while. And then this last year, I finally got an x-ray. And I was like, uh, where's this car been all my life? And uh, yeah, 
I need to open up all these screws. Uh, Daniel Explosion's on here. He just said, uh, any races anytime soon? Uh, we, uh, if you check our Facebook pages, um, we just announced that we are going to start off-road club racing on Saturday the 16th. Um, we're going to sign up online only uh, for the month of May. So there'll be 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th. And uh, then in June, we should be back to our full schedule. So it should be uh, Tuesday night crawler night, uh, Wednesday carpet racing, Friday family Friday off-road, and uh, Saturday, um, Saturday speed off-road. And that's at least until um, um, the Saturdays are at least until, you know, if it falls off, then we'll just combine Fridays for the, for summertime three by 16. So um, we'll see what happens. None of those are it. Where's my three by 16s? Yeah. <clears throat> Um, one nice thing is to have a pair of calipers so that you can always go in and make sure that you're actually putting in the right screws. So I always, uh, even if you built a car, you know, over and over and over again, I probably built like 10, 22s, uh, over the last, you know, four or five years, and I still always uh, double check the screw sizes so I don't screw something up. Because I am known for screwing stuff up. I do often screw things up. Do 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 do. I find this is kind of hard doing a live stream and building a car at the same time because I feel like I could lose my train of thought and skip a step or something. Make sure I didn't over tighten that. Um, so yeah, so get on uh, Facebook, search Hobbyplex. Um, Hobbyplex. Uh, um, I think I posted the race information on the Hobbyplex Saturday and Friday pages and the summer series as well. And uh, yeah, so. There's that. Um. I am definitely uh, definitely looking forward to getting this part of our chapter over with and going back to full time full time race mode where I can actually get on the track and do some maintenance and and uh, you know use my imagination to add stuff and it's definitely just been a constant just a constant uh going to work every day just like everybody else well most everybody else does and uh you know not necessarily getting that that race night in it's like a it's like a pc is just missing you know or you just there's stuff to look forward to every week and without that that um, you know all those all those uh, all those buddies that you see every week and and uh, that feel that you get when you're running your car, whether it be on road or off road or even flying for that matter, because they, they closed our flying field for a couple of weeks. I mean, it's just it's lame, you know. What size pinion should I use with a thirteen five and a four by four slash, dude? 
I, I think a 13.5 and a 4x4 four four slash would get really, really, really hot no matter what gear you throw at it. I mean, I think it would be something low. You're probably going to need like like an 11 or something. I think a 13.5 is going to get like way too hot. What are you putting a 13.5 and a 4x4 slash for anyways? That's a weird one. Okay, here's another little thing that I do. So uh, anytime you get metal on metal, of course, you want to try to use shred lock, right? Well, one of the biggest things that I see people do is uh, they use way too much thread lock, right? Or they'll pour it into the hole or they'll coat the whole thing with. And, uh, oh, okay, yeah, that could be fun. I think something low. I think something like 11 or 12 uh, for pinion gear. So anyway, so what I do is uh, these ball studs like to come out of the, uh, what do they call that? The uh, uh, ball stud mount, right? Metal on metal. So uh, what I've always done is I find a little spot on my table. Let's see if I can do this somewhere you can see it. Right here, right here. So I spooge a little thread lock under the table, and then I take my little thing here, my wrench, my ball stud, and I just barely dip it. So I get just, just the tip. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we put it in there. So. You definitely don't want to pour it in the threads because then you'll never get it out. Or if you, or you'll strip the, the bolt, you know, the ball stud, or you'll break a tip off your, off your uh, wrench. Breaking tips off is bad. What the heck? So I actually put uh, I actually put associated ball studs and uh, um, uh, rod ends on my Losi car in the back at least because of course the first time I ran out and I ran my car they broke off. All right. Here we go. So just like the instructions, don't drop it on the floor. And uh, so now we've got our number two pointed upwards. And that goes in there. And then we get to take our top. And put him down there, and then more three by twelves in the front, which should be these little guys. Yep. And the other thing you got to watch when you're doing any sort of gearbox is not to over tighten anything. So I usually am very careful with my my drill. Um, when I'm tightening down anything on a gearbox, I don't go down all the way. I use the, I'll, I'll hand tighten it. But, uh, let me tell you guys, having one of these is a lifesaver. I will never build another kit for as long as I live without an electric drill because it is crazy to, uh, to do it the old way. Three by sixteen, so that should be these two. Okay. 
Okay. And then uh, what I'll do now is take your wrench and just make sure I hand tighten your uh, transmission just a little bit. Nothing too tight. And then check it. Feels good to me. Next, we're going to, okay. Yeah, I actually have a stash of um, uh, I have a stash of Durango spacers. Um, the A, they're cool because they're gold in color, but also they're those nice big round ones that like the low C cars use. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there. I'm always a little like looking at these like, eh. but I save those for my low C car. <laughs> Actually, I should put them on this car because my son's car is gold. I didn't even think about that. I can always do it later. Not a big deal. Uh, is it worth it to boil glue tires because I stripped out my middle hex on my tires? Uh, weak sauce. Um, I mean, yeah, if the tires are still in good shape, uh, it's either that or you can cut them. Um, if you get a... If you get a sharp enough exacto blade, a lot of times you can you can salvage tires off of off of uh, crap rims uh, just by peeling them up a little bit and starting to. You basically have to kind of cut the tire a little bit. If you got um, if you got short course tires, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, if you can if you can do it, do it. You probably have to get new foams though. I'm pretty sure. Well, you will because it'll be wet basically. This is a pretty cool course. I need to get a camera that can that can flip around sometimes because uh, this rock crawling course is like nothing but rock, like pure rock. It looks like it's on a park or something too. That'd be pretty fun. Man, I can't wait to comp crawl again. I've been working on the stores crawler. Like, I've got my own personal crawler, the one, that one behind me. But I've been working on the stores, SCX10, uh, two. And, uh, dude, it, it crawls pretty good. I'm almost like, I might have to, like, choose between which one I would use for what day. You might see me on Tuesday nights with the store crawler instead of my own personal crawler sometimes. What was I doing? Oh yeah, okay. Uh, another three by 16, so that's probably this one. Not sure. And uh, that goes in there, that goes there. Cool. I'll have to look those up. It's one thing Nebraska does not have is a lot of rocks, like actual rocks. We got to truck it all in. I'm still thinking about. Uh, I wanted to make a class three with a Capra, but um, you know, don't quite have that. So. Uh, I might just I might just run I might just run the enduro either in both or maybe I'll run maybe I'll do it where like the SCX10 I run in class two and 
and then my enduro I run in class three or something or vice versa might be might flip it around and okay look at we're actually flipping a page it's been one hour and I'm flipping a page <laughs> There was a guy last year that had a uh, that had a like a wasn't a slash, but he was running like a slash body in uh, in uh, class three with giant two point two tires. So I don't know. Okay. That goes like that. Oh, there's, there's this thing. There we go. Do 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 do. do. I don't know. I think a Capra could be really good in class three just because of uh, the dig. I mean, can't beat it. Being able to turn super tight, have that wide base, have the uh, ground clearance. So I don't know. Maybe I can. Maybe I can find a way to make that happen. By the time we all start crawling again, I think we're gonna have our own crawling stuff. Um, I got to get to work on these flyers because now that it, now that we're getting close to getting close to going back to what we do, you know, I got to announce that uh, or have dates set up and times and all that other stuff for what we're doing besides racing. Okay, now we got to do that. Oh man, I don't have. Shoot, I knew I forgot something today. So these are the uh, these are the white slipper pads, and I'm supposed to be using the uh, what are they called? LFT, LTF, whatever they are. They're like a more like a sandpapery type, more like a original low C yellow kind of slipper pad. These always just get real greasy and slip all the time, so we never even use them. I knew I forgot something today at work. Now, Cole, I would love to do a drag night, but where would we drag at? We don't have a smooth surface anywhere. Like our parking lot's been trashed by big trucks and and just time. And then the street out front, you know, we couldn't really block it off. We'd probably get the sheriff's call on this by one of our neighbors or something. Otherwise, I'd love to do a Dragon Knight. Maybe like a show and shine, you know, something like that would be cool. We just don't have nice, uh, nice, uh, um, anywhere to do it. I wish that'd be cool. Yeah. So, Walmart, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the Holiday Bright Lights area, they might let us do that um, on that little strip they have, but I don't think it's enough room. And then um, you definitely wouldn't want to go to Walmart, dude. Hey, I don't think that parking lot's very smooth to begin with, but I can't stand that Walmart. I can't stand Walmarts in general. Like shopping inside of a Walmart when it's busy just makes me want to punch people. And uh, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Like it would make me want to punch a baby to go over there. Could you imagine all the people that would like start surrounding the place or all of us trying to, trying to drag race? 
we wouldn't be we wouldn't be left alone. So I have an idea for this part. Oh. I never changed them out in my kid's car. <laughs> so fine, I guess I'm just gonna do that. All right, all right, let's get this thing together. Probably. Okay, so uh, this one time uh, at Bandcamp, uh, actually, um, no, it was uh, it was March 18th, 2016, and uh, uh, was it 2016? That seems like a really long time ago. I think it was 2016. Anyways, um, no, 18? Maybe it was 18. 17. It doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, I followed a shoplifter and their plan was to, uh, was to take something from our store, uh, go over to that Walmart, transfer it to another vehicle and then leave. And, uh, we followed him over there and, uh, blew up the plan and then, uh, carnage ensued and we won't talk about that, uh, anymore. But, uh, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that Walmart. Oh, that's where you guys are at? Dude, Axial Fest looks super fun. So, um, before all this stuff started, you know, I was actually thinking about entering the one, the Midwest one. Or they were going to have it. I believe it was Indiana. But now I'm not sure if they're having it or not. So, um, I don't know. But I would love to go to Axial Fest. And those, like, uh, Recon Gen 8s, uh, like the Recon events, I could do that. I think that'd be, I think that'd be a blast. I've been thinking about trying to do that out here. So we have a whole bunch of mountain bike trails and some of them like Lewis and Clark uh, can get pretty hairy. I think that'd be fun to try to do like a, like a, uh, it's about a five mile loop. And I think it'd be awesome to have like a group of us basically try to like make it through <laughs> a whole thing. Wear a backpack with a bunch of batteries and stuff like they do. I can do that. I think that'd be super fun. What was I doing? I forgot what I was doing. Uh, okay. Yeah. I watched, I finally got a chance to watch the uh, Come Drive With Us Axial Fest. And it um, blew my mind. I did not know how in-depth uh, Axial Fest actually was. And I should have. I mean, it's super popular and everybody likes going to it. We've had a few guys from here go. I think it'd be great. So I was kind of happy when they split it up and you could have a Midwest one and then all this crap started happening. <laughs> Dude, Tranquility Park is 10 miles. Five of it's just flat, but there's a little bit out there. That could be kind of fun. It'd be hard for some. Okay. We got to put this pin in here. Come on. There we go.
Yeah, the last time I was in any elevation was uh, 2010. I took my dad with me to the uh, Roar Nats, Gas Nats, when they were in Colorado Springs. And uh, before the race, we spent we spent like uh, three days up in the mountains. And I forgot what that was like, man, because I was not – I forgot that it's very easy to lose your breath. You don't really think about it until you're like – you like run for a second. You're like, Jesus. I thought I was – thought I was doing okay. <laughs> Okay, other side, we got to do this, and we're going to compress our spring again, and this, and then your flange nut, and I need my 5.5. I would just like to thank Team Associated for uh, making their Slipper Nut um, 5.5, a regular 3 millimeter 5.5 .5 instead of 5.0 that nobody has. Thank you. Why is it not going in? What am I doing here? Oh, we're down to like six people. I suck. That's okay. Like diehards. Okay. So there's our completed transmission. And uh, feels pretty free to me. So that's pretty cool. And now we just got to drop it in. And I do feel like I messed up. There's got to be a 20 millimeter. Um, it says three by 20, but this is like a this is like a three by 20, 22. There we go. Yep, there we go. I was using too long of a screw because I wasn't paying attention. Okay, put that there. And this one, now we're gonna move all the stuff out of the way. Because we're gonna go like this and like that. And the back ones are three by sixteen, which should be these. Yep. Maybe. Maybe not. Why is that not going in? What am I missing? Weird. I was just being a puss. <laughs> okay. 
Now we'll get the rest of these in here. I'm trying to decide what motor I should uh, I should give Emerson for this car because we were running a six five on carpet, but that was on carpet. So I don't know. I run a 7.0 and we're 7.5. I'm kind of thinking maybe a 7.5 would be best for him too. But he might be able to handle a 6.5. And I can always uh, turn the speed down if it becomes a, an issue. Again, I kind of like to hand tighten stuff um, just so I don't strip anything out. Especially these bottom screws. They're terrible if they're stripped. And should be. Yeah. That should be all of them. Okay. And now put the shock tower on. What time is it? Oh yeah, I got plenty of time. So we'll save these for I'll probably give these stock pieces away to somebody or or late or stand up. Uh probably keep this for the layback, but uh this spur gear I'll probably give to somebody at the track running stock just because we're never gonna use it. And uh or just keep it in my my bin of associated parts. Cause you never know if somebody's at the track and they'll, they might need some help. I got multiple stock spur gears in here and multiple, uh, layback, um, uh, transmission pieces. Yep. Thanks, Bill. Uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck at your crawler event. Crawling's fun. I love crawling. I'll ho hopefully we'll have some videos up soon of our crawler course when I get done with what I'm planning on getting done with. So thanks for tuning in. Got about 12 more minutes on here, um, at least live. I don't like to make these too long. <clears throat> kind of already talked about uh, talked about racing, uh, getting back to racing. Really looking forward to that. Kind of one of the reasons why we're building this car tonight is uh, now that we know. I saw Will Brenton post some stuff on uh, Facebook about his B6 getting freshened up and getting ready to get back to it. You know, those first two weeks are going to be on a really, really old track surface. So it'll be interesting uh, to see how everybody uh, adapts to it. Um, should be fun, though. I think the racing line is going to be like, like this big. I'm pretty sure. And uh, let's see, one of these with one of doing that. Clayton Whitmire's on here. It's uh, it's Emerson's B62. So the whole story goes that I was going to take uh, I was going to take that uh, his old car and turn it into a dirt car, and then 
uh, we just got into B62, and I'm like, you know what? It might be easier for me to just build him a new dirt car and just put that on eBay as a carpet car. Less work. So that's uh, that's what I'm doing. My low C car is still ready to go for dirt. We'll give it a shot this year. We'll, uh, we'll hang out with the ex-girlfriend for a while. <laughs> Dude, I hate it when I do that, man. There'll be stuff that I uh, that I need to get, need to get, and I'll put it off, and then next thing you know, I'll get it, and then turns out I didn't need it because I already had it. Happens all the time. It's annoying. Emerson's finally here. I walked in. He's a little late. I walked in on Roxy and Finn, and Finn was on top of Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> Finn's probably had enough of Roxy. <laughs> Emerson. Yes. Explain to everybody why you're not building your own car. Oh, because uh, homework is dumb. That is why. It's not dumb. You have to get it done. Only for another week. It's important. Only for another week. Whatever. All right, shop tower. There we go. No. Dude, she's not gonna let you hold her. I know, she doesn't want her. So this cat of mine uh, only looks is only uh, uh, only really lets me hold her. She doesn't let anybody else hold her. Uh, Clayton, this was free. <laughs> Will gave it to me. I like it because you can move it so you can get in tighter spots. But I actually didn't have to pay for it. Maybe I should have. I don't know. <laughs> you should ask Cameron. Cameron got his on Amazon. His is a little... Uh, um, his is one of those DeWalt ones where if you... It, you, you can like... It, it, um, it turns on by you twisting your arm. It's actually pretty cool. I was kind of jelly. A little jealous. <laughs> It's also a little bit smaller than this one, too. Yeah, okay, a gyro. Great. Just want to remind everybody, I'm not an engineer. I don't know what it's called. It's a thingy that makes it do the thingy that does the thingy. I cannot wait. Uh, well, if you've uh, if you watched our podcast on Monday, you kind of already know what Will and I talked about. But I cannot wait for this podcast to come out. It's we had a lot of fun. It was pretty funny. But if you already saw it on YouTube, then that's good. I enjoy the viewership. All right, shock tower's on, arms are on, all that good stuff. Looks like I get to move on to a new bag. So I'm going to clean up some of this stuff real quick. Actually, no, I need to get Emerson some gold, uh, Ring buttons. 
so we can look cool. Wing buttons are cool. Especially if they're gold. What? Your wing buttons. We got to get you gold wing buttons again. Okay. Because they're not on your car now, are they? No. We, did we lose them? Maybe. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I hate it when I have screws left over. I hope they're for the next part. Uh, oh, I know what I forgot. Or did I? Did I forget that? Probably, knowing myself. Oh, look at that. It's a six wheeler. That's pretty cool. All right. There's that, 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 and that. I'm probably going to make him build the next bag. So, okay. um, yeah, not too bad. Got, uh, got the rear end of the car almost done, about halfway there. Just got to do the hubs, and then we'll do the shocks and the turnbuckles and uh, put a motor in it, and then we'll get ready to break her in at the track. So by this time next week, we should be – should already be running. So um, that's probably good for tonight. Um, appreciate you guys that that uh, that stayed here the whole time. <laughs> Not a lot to watch for a little while, but uh, we made some progress on this car. And uh, again, uh, the Plex starts racing next Saturday. Um, you can expect some videos to come out of that. Uh, we'll be celebrating the fact that we're back to racing. We might even do like a racer spotlight. We might pick somebody out of the crowd. Um, and then uh, again, uh, you know, in June, we should be back to our regular schedule uh, for racing. So Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and uh, Wednesday night on the carpet. So, whew, man. Um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in uh, that stayed with it. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in if you just got here or if you're uh, um, watching this thing after the fact. Either way, we appreciate you guys. And uh, it's fun to have a Thursday night kind of set aside to just kind of hang out and do stuff and, and interact with people all over the place, customers or, uh, you know, people from all over. So um, that's it for now. Um, make sure if you haven't subscribed and uh, like, tell your friends, check out the channel, watch the house jump, share the house jump. And uh, we'll see you later. Thank you.